Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to be reviewing another holiday palette. This one is limited edition and I have been so excited for it. Urban Decay launched a palette that is different, that is interesting, that is artistic. I feel like our prayers have been answered. Let me show you this new Urban Decay and Rubbing Eisenberg eyeshadow palette. I hope I'm saying her last name correctly. She is an LA based artist. And just take a look at the absolutely stunning artwork right here on the front of the box of this palette. I love it. This palette is already available at the Urban Decay website and I'm going to look through my other favorite retailers and list everything I find down below in the description box. Let's take a look at the actual packaging now because the actual packaging is far more exciting than the box. So it has the same imagery, right? But look at the glitter down there. I am obsessed and the glitter shimmer on the girl's eyeshadow and her coat is also glittery. I don't know, this is like the Urban Decay release that absolutely no one saw coming, yet we are all here for it. I remember when I did my Will I Buy It video and I showed you guys that this palette was coming out, I read some of the comments on the Trend Mood website underneath this palette. And let me tell you, on Trend Mood, when they do new makeup releases, People are ruthless with their opinions in the comment section. Probably because I feel like the Trend Mood one Instagram account is followed by like true makeup lovers, makeup collectors. People who like me are very passionate about the makeup industry in general. And so they leave their very true and honest and raw opinions underneath every single post, right? So I remember reading comments underneath this palette announcement and everything I saw was positive because it was surprising that after all of the boring palettes they've been releasing for the past like five and a half to six years, because it's like it's been a while right after all of those finally they're launching something that is different that is exciting that is a bit on the colorful side it has stunning artwork on the front i just want to like thank you thank you i feel like this is hopefully the way to go and i know i'm speaking way way ahead of time i haven't even swatched this palette i have not tried the shadows anyways as you can see i'm overly excited for this palette something else worth mentioning this year in particular i feel like a lot of makeup brands have raised their prices um, of their traditional eyeshadow palettes at least a few bucks like three to four bucks right urban decay naked palettes like way way back it used to be like 49 dollars, but this is like 10 years ago and then they raised their prices a few years ago to 54 but they have not raised them again this year thank god so this palette is retailing for 54 dollars still the palette says that it's made of us and or imported materials and then it is finished in the Dominican Republic. And then the brush that the palette comes with is made in Vietnam. Let's go ahead and open it up and show you. It has the traditional dual brush that Urban Decay palettes have been coming with for years. And take a look right here at this absolutely stunning. Colorful on this side, but also neutral color story. The palette has the plastic packaging that it's been coming with in the past few years and it does come with a mirror. I really love that this palette has an amazing amount of shimmers versus mattes and also I love that there is some neutral everyday colors that you can combine with bold colorful things. Also it has some warmth in it and some nice cool tones right here in the back. It's a very balanced palette. I'm very excited for it. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and start swatching it. The first color, which is the lightest one, is called Moon Sand. And this looks like a nice matte shade. Depending on your skin tone, you can use it underneath the brows as a matte-ish highlighter or you can use it as your base for your eyeshadow. Then the second shade is Solar Storm, which is a really nice neutral kind of basic transition color. And the third color is called Pulsar. I'm reading it in Spanish. I'm not sure. Pulsar. Anyways, it is a really light peachy shimmer shade. Fourth color, Iron, which is your good old standard shimmer gold shade. I don't know what pulsar would mean in English because in Spanish, 
Um, it's like to dial, I think. Um, so if it's a word in English, please let me know. <laughs> Let's keep going. This one is called Mango Sun and it's a nice peachy shade. Then we have Exoplanet, which is a really pretty gold shimmer shade. And Foxfire right here, which is a matte red. Matte muted red, I should say. And then here we have Holidays, which is swatched so close to the other shade. I am sorry, but also it is a really nice plum shimmer. Now let's go for the truly fun shades, because if the palette were to have stopped at like this color story right here, nobody would have looked twice at it. The fun shades are coming, and they are these four right here. First, we have the color Home Planet, which is this really nice cool tone baby blue with like a hint of purple in there. Then Ice Crater, which is a really pretty, kind of like a midnight blue shimmer. Then we have the color Alien Babe, which is this electric blue shimmer shade. And lastly, Space Pod, which is my personal favorite because I love teal eyeshadow so take a look right here at the swatches of this palette like i said this down here is the section that i am 100 percent very excited for and i feel like the rest of these shades here for me at least are just going to be really nice colors to combine these shades with <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what look to even do, but I'm going to start the way I always start with a transition color. So I'm grabbing um, Solar Storm on a reference number 27, and I'm going to back and forth just blend this shade on my crease. Now that I have my transition shade done, I have to use this matte blue right here. I have a reference number one brush, and I'm going to start by just putting it on the inner part of my crease just like this, halfway in, and I'm building it up a bit by patting it in place. Same thing over here. And now I just wanna go for the darkest matte this palette has, which looks like it's this red. Whenever there's a palette with really nice, colorful, darkish shimmer shades, I want a deep matte shade to match them or to like deepen them up. Even if it's just a black, it doesn't have to be a color, right? I feel like this palette needs a matte black is what I'm trying to say because I would like to darken these colors to a color that is darker than these dark shimmers and there's not really like matte shades in this palette darker than the blue cool tone shimmer shades. So with the matte red shade, I'm going to build my outer corner and just blend into the crease ever so slightly. And then doing little circles up here, I'm just blending that shade up into the crease and making it meet with the blue. So here's what we have so far. Time to go into the shimmers. I want to use Ice Crater, and this is a reference number 28. This is the darkest color in the palette. It's like a midnight blue shimmer. And I'm going to pat it right back here. Not all the way on the outer corner. I want to leave a space for the reddish shade. I actually don't know what I'm doing yet. I just don't want to put it back there yet. All right, so this is exactly how I'm going to leave it. It's like blended into the outer corner a bit. It's like a nice transition back there. It doesn't look muddy and it has a nice amount of space on my eyelid. All of the things I was going for. Now for my next step, I really want to use my favorite shade, Space Rod, right here. So with the refer number 28 once again, I want to add this one to the center of my eyelid. It'll mix easy with the blue back here. And I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping it. Just leaving a little bit of a third of my eyelid with no product on it still. And you can see that this does have a bit of fallout down here. I did do my face makeup before the rest of my makeup today so i would recommend you not to do that <laughs> i would do my eyes first if i were you because i am getting some fallout from these shades my fallout situation down here is not doing great i think i'm going to have to redo um my concealer because it is not going away anyways i think i'm going to use the color pulsar here and i'm going to add it to my inner third and hate it there okay now with the same brush i'm going to alien babe which is the one of these four colors we haven't used yet and use that shade on the inner corner okay i'm going back with my finger to add more of the teal shade 
because I love it and I want it to like be seen a bit more. And also my nighttime color back here. Just a bit more with my finger. I think the brush maybe wasn't doing these justice. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just not liking it as much as I thought I would like it. I just don't like that I had to use and I know I have a thousand palettes that I can reach into to be able to use these teal blue shades better but I don't like that my outer corner color is so warm when these shades are so cool toned and also I just don't have any other color to put back there that I'll like better. I'm just going to take off this warm crease color. It's just not working for me, not working for these blue shades. And I'm going to go with my only other option, which was the option that I didn't want to use. I'm also going to clean this fallout. It looks like this just became a makeup surgery type of video. I know you guys like it when I do makeup surgery <laughs> on here. So first of all, I'm taking off my concealer because the fallout was real. And I'm also taking off any warmth from my eye look. This is what we have so far. I'm not going to reapply concealer quite yet, but I am going to let my eyelids dry for a second because the makeup wipe was very wet. My eyelids dried. I had a bit of concealer under there before, but I'm not even going to reapply that because I don't want to mess things up even more. I'm just going to go back with my transition shade, which was Solar Storm and a big fluffy brush. This one is my refer number 27 once again. With a refer number 15, I'm grabbing the blue shade Home Planet and I'm going to add it to this outer part of my crease where I didn't have it before. That has a lot of fallout, by the way. I'm just gonna push it, push it, push it and um, pray that we can fix this. So with a refer number one, I'm going back into the color Ice Crater here, which is this really nice dark shimmer shade that we had on the eye before and I'm going to press it into my outer corner. Just getting, I'm getting frustrated. I'm going to take all of it off and I'm going to prime my eye and um, hope for the best. I'm back and I did a look on this eye. It is an acceptable look, but I have a lot to say. <laughs> um, first of all, I hated that my makeup surgery did not work at all whatsoever. Second of all, let me start the look um, with the Solar Storm shade. So for some reason, these shimmers, which are so beautiful, will just not want to stick on my eye. The solution I found, which is usually my last resort because makeup formulas are very advanced nowadays, right? When you buy a high-end luxury makeup palette, it's been quite a few years since I'm like expected to wet a brush in order to get the product to do what I want the product to do. And so my last resort was to wet my brush with some setting spray so that these shimmer colors would actually look nice and intense and pigmented the way that I knew they could look because they look really insanely beautiful on the actual pan, but it was really hard to get them to look like that on the eyes. Switching to my refer number 15, I'm going to use this blue shade and I'm putting it all around the crease. This blue shade also is a bit troublesome. <laughs> um, when you just blend it back and forth like this, it kind of disappears. You have to grab a lot of it and then you have to press it into your eyelid first. And then from there, start blending. So note that if you go for this palette because it wasn't the easiest to use. And it is a $57 eyeshadow palette. This is not cheap, this is not Colourpop, this is not drugstore. You are paying a lot of money for it. So I just expect the shadows to work better. Pat McGrath released a beautifully colorful, amazing holiday palette. I'll put a picture right here if you haven't seen it. I've done a couple of videos with it. And that palette with 18 stunning shades is 80 something dollars, right? So I know it's expensive, but if you are spending $60 on this, which it has a lot less shades, um, so it would be kind of comparable in price, I feel like you can expect more quality from this product being that it is a high-end product as well right? Right. So I'm a little angry because it just doesn't have the quality that I was expecting. Ultimately, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. I just had to use a 
setting spray to make the colors work but I just expect me not to have to do that anymore. It's been years since that was the standard and I feel like the beauty industry has changed so much and formulas have gotten so much better. And so here's a wet brush. And so if I'm spending almost $60 on a palette, I shouldn't be having to get a lesser quality product than what is now kind of the industry standard. When you buy a Pat McGrath palette, a Natasha Denona palette, even at these lower price points like Natasha Denona has $68 palettes with more shades than this palette has, right? And you never have to wet a shadow, you never have to complain about a formula. Even Colourpop has amazing palettes at very affordable price points and I have never had to wet a Colourpop eyeshadow in order to make it work, right? So why would I have to do that? with one of the biggest brands in the industry. And so yeah, I'm a little angry because I feel like they took such a step forward by doing this collaboration and coming out with something different, something colorful, something that people were asking them for for a while. I saw the excitement on the trend mood comments and whatnot, and it's like the same thing that I complained about when I reviewed the Too Faced palette. Their formula has just stayed 10 years in the past and I feel like their formula needs to be stepped up if they want to continue to compete with the products that are currently popular and that are currently kind of leading the way in the makeup industry with the Natasha Denonas and the Pat McGraths and the Patrick Taz etc. It just makes me sad that this brand having had the moment that it had in the industry every time I try it lately the products are just subpar, right? Okay, my rant is done. This is the top of the eyes right here. <sighs> Hold on. We need to add a bit more of the darker color here, it looks like, because I have a little gap. As I was saying, my rant is done, and this is the top of the eye look here. Nice and sparkly, pretty dramatic. I'm just going to do one look with this palette because um, these are pretty much the fun shades for me. Everything else here is pretty basic and you've seen me do a million and one basic looks here on the channel. So let me clean underneath my eye. Let me put on some concealer and I'll be right back to finish up this look. Back with my concealer on, I wet my refer number three with some setting spray and I'm going to grab Ice Crater once again. And with my wet brush, I'm going to back and forth smudge this one underneath my lower lash line and back with the same brush i'm going to grab the color space pod and with this one i'm going to intensify my under eye a bit i just wanted to kind of match the top and i really like the teal shade <laughs> with the refer number 26 which is like a bigger pointed brush i'm going back to solar storm which was my transition shade and i'm going to smoke out the blue a bit just back and forth here and with that same brush, I'm grabbing the color Moon Sand. And with this one, I'm going to lighten up this inner corner a bit. Just tapping it right here. For my waterline and navy blue eyeliner, this one is the number one eyeliner pencil from Glossier, which I love. These colored eyeliners are amazing. And so this is it. This right here is the look. I'm going to be back with some mascara and lashes to tell you guys my final thoughts. I'm back with the lashes on, and this right here is the final look. Ultimately, I feel like I said most of what I had to get off my chest <laughs> earlier in the video. The color story is beautiful. I think that the artists that they collaborated with in order to make this palette did a fantastic job picking shades. But ultimately, when you do a collaboration with a brand, the brand is the one that is in charge of their formula, so she doesn't have anything to say when it comes to the formulation of these shadows. The color story is beautiful. I'm honestly obsessed with the look that I created because this one shade right here just makes this palette so absolutely stunning. So do I like this look? Yes. Is it something that I could see me using? Yes. But I'm just tired of paying $60 for palettes that like make us work harder when there is so much competition on the industry that you can get a much better quality palette than this one for probably less money. So did Urban Decay take a step in the right direction by doing something out of the box, doing something that they haven't done 
in a while and coming out with something colorful and fun yes but just like with Too Faced I just feel like these huge cosmetics companies need to do better when it comes to the formulation of their shadows because ultimately they're just not competing with much better formulas that are out there on the market already so if this look is everything to you and you want to buy this palette just because like this color story right here speaks to you that much that you would want to spend $60 on it just for those shades then by all means but ultimately I don't think I recommend that if you cover these four shades right here you have a very regular looking palette and then there are so many other brands and even indie brands that have these colors with a much better quality that you don't need to you know wet your brush to use or anything like that <laughs> so yes i was very excited about this one i do think that they took a step in the right direction by collaborating with an artist and by giving us something different and something colorful but the formula needs to be better if you're going to still sell these palettes for 60 dollars each and that right there is my opinion <laughs> if you like this video don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave also for more videos reviewing new makeup please subscribe to my channel i love you guys so so much thank you for watching and i hope to see you back in the next video bye